a while since we've had any Oric content, isn't it? And today we can fix that because here we have a whole bag of them. You know, them, I say them. There are two Oryx in here and this is as much as I have seen. We need to go through these together because as you may have noticed, one of them, well, it has some issues. Someone's glued everything together on the pipe wall. And that's why we have two, because we now have a spare set of wands, we have bags, we have many things. What we need to do today is to get one good machine out of all of this stuff that we can then work with, I can refurbish and so on and such forth, and then work out what we've got left and what we could possibly do with it. Let's have a look, literally. Yes, hello, my vacuum cleaner, mediocre, or it comes. How are you today? Yes, this is a Mr. James special. He would like one of these Oryx to keep, but obviously it has the slight problem that, yeah, someone's glued a lot of this together. We'll see more of that, and it's like, it's hard. So I'd imagine it's Sugru or chemical metal. I'm, we may attempt to crack these open later, but for now, let's go through this and see what we're working with. We have a bag. Select. Obviously, all of these RX got branded up as many, many things in the UK. We've probably got different ones to the US. So, yes, we have that. We have the bag holder in its two parts. Fair enough. Ooh, we even have a bag. Oh, genuine Hepa flow style bag, probably leave that be for now. And then we have this oh, away bag. Oh, we've got a spare belt. We have this Oric XL in green. Let's have a look at the ratings plate. I know that a lot of you American viewers can decipher bits and bobs from that. So this is model. Like I can't read that. There's a scuff. U2645HSCSQ rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? I don't quite know how to do the date code. 09313C, I would guess that's 2009. And this is pretty dirty, but actually not too bad. And find the, where did that belt go? Ah, there it is. We'll put the belt back because that's where all good Oric belts should live. So yes, this is the machine that Mr. James would like to keep. But yeah, look, there's more of it here, which obviously won't come off. She's a bit of a problem, really, which is why I got given a second bag of stuff. That's actually an empty bag. That doesn't want to be in there at all. We have ourselves another Oric Select bag, although this one has, I think... A massive hole in the side of it there which is a bit of a shame but equally we have a spare bag holder in no we don't have a bag holder in there we just have the cage that it should go with and look all of the rubber stuff is ruined so that's actually probably rubbish but we have one of these look the XL5 bag obviously a better wand an entire spares machine, this one is an XL5-105 and this isn't wanting to be kept. I have this machine purely to harvest all of the bits that we may need. We have ourselves our handle here for said machine. We have another straight wand and rolling about would be the ceiling ring and turny lock possibly for this bit. Marvellous! Where do we start now? Because I mean I, I do believe that these all work. I mean I suppose we could plug one of this green one in now. <laughs> Yeah, 
works absolutely fine as I imagine does this one here which I ah, no wait it doesn't because look it's had its cable cut fair enough so yeah you don't have can't turn this one on but that's fine because we don't actually want to what we need to do is take it apart because we need to harvest its entire fan case in order to make a start on piecing this green one back together enough to do a demonstration and you know the usual before video malarkey before I strip it down tidy it up and then show you it all working and I don't know what to do with this yet really I guess we'll have to see if we can take some of these apart later on and work it out so yeah I'm going to get some tools together and we'll get this apart while since I've had an Oric apart but I do believe we have to start by undoing these five screws here and then if we flip them over we can catch them or catch four of them anyway here oh there's the fifth ah and then up oh okay did it upside down that goes in there oh C CBL repair 7th of February 2020 so someone's been in here before and obviously we're in here now so basically we need that part there and um, to get to that part we have to take a few things apart so we'll do the all right brush roll we'll take the belt out in a bit then we have two more screws in order to remove the motor housing motor looks very clean indeed so that's all right even though we can't really decide decipher what's going on yet because there's no cable we have ourselves a good base we'll take you take this off and note that this machine has been used damp because it's full of wet fluff now this is the bit that I sort of might need to pause the video and remember because I'm reasonably sure that the fan has to come off for this bit to come out so I, I don't know if we can squeeze it through here prior no we, I don't think we can oh I've also noticed look my nemesis twisted together wires so I think we're going to again I'm going to pause, find some tools in order to undo this fan nut and we'll cut all the wires so we can lift all this out eventually and get to the piece that we want. In fact, that must come through here because even if I do take it off, that's still not going to... Aha! It does. Look, there's actually flats on it for that precise reason. So that's good. That actually helps rather a lot. And ooh, Okay, we can make things much simpler there we go put all that off to the side for now and we are left with our motor all right let me find the right size socket and something to hold the armature in place so that we can crack it off Ugh, filthy already there we are i have a nice small pair of bowl grips hopefully on there enough so it doesn't slip and chew up the belt spindle and then oh get the ratchet going the right way we can loosen and then remove the fan nut and then yay that all comes apart like so so there's our motor that can go aside for a second i now need to remove this i think crikey it's, it's been a while since i've worked on an orec How does this come off again? It is coming actually. Apologies for any headphone users. Crikey, there we go. So we don't need those bits either. This is the first piece of our puzzle. Look, we have a date wheel of 2011. So, <laughs> guess what's coming next, can't you? We've got to. Oh, ah, there's a there's a lock washer there. We've got to do pretty much exactly the same to this one which is going to be a bit more fiddly because it's still connected up to its handle which I'm trying to sort there we go trying to move the cable out of the way so yeah we can't just sort of cut the cables but I'm actually thinking we probably can't take this off either because it's 
going to be too big to fit through. So we might have to start with a little bit of destruction. Oh, these aren't big enough. This is going to be fun. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. How am I going to get this off? We are literally going to have to chisel. Can't even chisel it. Uh-oh. Oh, well, we sort of can. Um, um, yeah, I'll, I won't show you how I'm going to battle this because I don't quite know yet. But once it's off, and it has to come off, otherwise this won't pass through, we'll pick back up. Some light persuasion later, it just popped straight off, and I'm now wondering if it was actually needed at all. I mean, if we put the rubber ring back in there, it stays on there okay. I don't quite know the reasoning behind it. Mr. James bought it like this. Yeah, this is weird. It smells quite bad when you start smashing it apart as well. But, oh gosh, when we get this one work we can clean all of this up we can now go back to removing our five screws and we'll just pull the bottom off of this one which is a lot cleaner all round although oh dear it's been used for DIY there's plaster dust here so that's going to be interesting but the most of one's fine so can't be too bad oh lovely take out the brush roll, undo our three screws, we'll just do them all straight away, and luckily these are all the same size screws so we don't have to worry too much about keeping a great track of them. Now we've done it once, all we've got to do is to get this rotated enough now that I know rather well. Uh oh. Uh, poo. Have just broken it though. Oh no. Snap the terminal. Terminals. Uh oh. My ham fistedness. Bleh, my ham fistedness. Look, we've snapped the two terminals that should sit there. So maybe it's a good job we do have a spare motor. Oh, poo. And I let didn't see where each one went either, although I'd imagine it doesn't actually matter. These will both just be permanent power, one for the light bulb and one not. But that is a bit of a pain and probably going to mean that we might have to fit this motor, which still has its two terminals. Absolutely fine. Good job, Mr. James. Gave me a spare, isn't it? Oh. Let me get this off. In fact, do we even need to do that now? We could probably just, having wasted all of that time, very carefully remove that terminal. Well, that whole thing's probably no good now. We may as well just fit this one straight onto this motor and call it done. I, mean, I presume it runs. I see no reason why it shouldn't. Ah, oh, bother. Always be careful, folks, when you remove things from a machine. Right, get this back in and then, well, we can start to piece it back together really because we'll have all of the good ones we need. Say ones in the handle, isn't it? Hey, next. Well, what I've learned through doing all this is that I'm a complete idiot and you must always pay attention to the type of terminals that are used. Because the reason that we ripped out two and snapped one of these tabs is because it uses the same locking connectors that, that Mr. Dyson used on all of their stuff. And you think I would be incredibly familiar with it, and I am, I just wasn't fully expecting it here. So, 
might be able to fix this bone, so I'm going to have a hunt around for a scrap one and see, because all these do, I don't know, I can show you really, is sit in there and sandwich onto the coil wire, so any sort of the same terminal will do that, and I've, I've got some scrap motors somewhere, so might be worth a go. I think the best thing to do now is to turn this on, and I'm going to take this over here and plug it into my RCD connector, just in case I've got the terminals the wrong way around and it, it all blows up. I feel it's out the way. And we'll see what happens. Yeah. Whoops. Something is not right. I think I've just blown the fuse in the plug. So poo. Let me let me work this out and get it running and then we can save the rest of this video. So what you just witnessed was a complete idiot, i.e. myself, wiring this motor up backwards and putting all the voltage through it the wrong way. The only real casualty is one of the light bulbs that all the power goes into this one and then this passes it over to the second bulb and yeah, this inside of there is the remains of the, it, it blew the entire element off of there so we've gone through the other one and i've pinched the bulb from it also notice they've caught this damage on there so yeah i don't think we're going to be able to make a good one out of two quite yet because obviously i haven't fixed this one so we now have this one working well the next thing to do is to get it back together now i'm going to oh New or old? Which do we do? I think we'll do old. Does old go at the top? Um, I haven't got a manual, so I don't actually know. I think that's fine. And we'll put that on. We shall pop the base back on. Is this the right base? No. This is the right base because it's absolutely disgusting, which is what... Ah, hang on. I'm confused now. Doesn't actually matter though, does it? I think we're actually going to keep the much nicer base regardless. And probably what we should get into the frame of mind of doing is just making one very good machine out of two. There we go. Screw, 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 screw. And then up through this side piece here. Because we're going to put the belt on the proper way. It is a little bit easier. When you do things the right way. Right, that slides off of there. And yeah, now I'll bring you forward a little bit now that I'm not in danger of exploding my camera. Put the belt over the brush roll. Slide it over the motor spindle. And then, yeah, as we turn it she centers up nicely slot that back in there find our screw which is this one i think again they're all exactly the same screws <sighs> and we have the beginnings of what we want now then don't think it matters which way round this goes, as long as this little notch goes at the back so it doesn't turn and twist around. We shall take our nicer, I'm having to go through all the scrap parts behind me now, to get the nicer one of these. Oh, we'll put the rubber seal on first. Eh. You on there. You on there. Oh. And that tightens down very nicely indeed. Right, time for the top part of the handle. Where have I put that? Here it is. Look, it's still part of this bag. I was looking around thinking obviously this one was off. So this is the piece that we need. But new from in here. So reasonably simple. Just got to... Ah, unclip the bag housing from the rest of it. Come on, how do you... 
There we go, it's just use the power of bending plastic really. Did we have a screw? No, I don't. Ah, ah there we go. So, probably, I don't know which bag holder to keep either. Let's just, let's just worry one thing at a time. We'll take, there we go. Ah, filthy. So, this is what we need and we can again remove this because it needs to go onto here and oh, you need to come up just a little bit. Hello. Marvellous. So put this back on and then this and then this. No. <laughs> this, then this, then this. Oh, there's people that work on these all the time probably crying. I am sorry. <sighs> there we go with that. Now, this is possibly going to be a little bit fiddly diddly, get our bag, pop it on there, oh you need to go, there we go, yeah. then this goes on and I think it actually just slides on and then clicks down like that, this bit pivots on here like so and then um i don't actually know how the bag goes on tell me how the bag goes on folks i think it slides yes there it is look it slides into there and then that goes on there but then it's not what clicks it together ah force there we go, I think that's that. If not, we'll soon find out when it fills the bag up with rubbish. And obviously I've still got to clean this, so it doesn't really matter if it does. And then down here we can put our spring into the back of the bag, like so. And we are getting there. Time to just make it a little bit taller. Next we can actually find a screwdriver and loosen this just a little bit. Pop our top handle on, like so. Oh no, wait, we do have to remove it. I thought that that little, that bit there was on this side, which would have meant that we could have just slotted it down, but no, it's not. Got to take out this screw. They're so simple yet, but you don't work on one for a couple of years. You forget everything. Come on, out you come. I'm looking at this now, I've still got that teal green one in the shed that we looked at many years ago now. I should really get that out. This might inspire me to. There we go. Pop its little cable clip into there, like so, and crikey, I think that's it. I think this is now ready to clean up all of this mess. <laughs> She works, we have lost the other headlight. <laughs> but that's fine, I know where we have a known good spare. See, I quite like RX, they're nice and tall, perfect height for tall old me. Seems to really like this rug. I mean, I know people don't like them. I can sort of understand why, if they don't like your carpet, I'd imagine they are utterly horrible in most ways but you know what i quite like them. well again i haven't seen that many of them so for me they're still just a little bit special i remember reading the magazine adverts for them oh david rx giving it his all trying to sell them yeah 
they're still quite fun for me. So this is now ready to come back apart, be refurbished, and I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. You may also see this stuff because again, I've you know I, I can keep this one and it's very very tatty. The bag is really linted up and has had a split bag or two in it. So XL5. I, I'm not quite sure how you're going to see it again. You won't until I can find replacements for all of those terminals. So I guess we'll have to wait and see for the after video if I can do anything with both of these. But yeah, we certainly got the one that Mr. James wanted to keep all ready to come back apart again and be clean, scrubbed, washed and put back together. Not much polishing needed on one of these. Just a good clean. And yeah, if you look up closely, look, it's, it's quite filthy. The bumper is disgusting. All of the textured plastic is just full of junk. And yeah, everything else is going on the hill. I think we just put the cleaner bottom part on here. So that's nice. Oh, and maybe sort the cables out so I don't have a live terminal, not say live terminal, the live cable poking out the back. So yeah, that's it for this video. Comment down below on what your Oric tales of woe or joy are. And I and this will see you soon.